Hello and welcome back to another game of Dota 2. You are watching Star Ladder Star Series Season 7, Day 29 of 30. That's right, tomorrow is the last day. And we're gonna see game one of the three Alliance games that we have today. They will have their last day in Star Series right here. As for now, they are going up against the bottom of Star Series. In the number 16, it is gonna be Ubos Gaming on the Di Radiant side with Alliance on the Dire side. And of course, I am not by myself. I am joined by two people. We we have got Nahas, who you probably already saw in the chat over on twitch.tv slash Gaming. He'll be providing you with all the stats and also, of course, with the trivias and the pop quizzes. And uh, next to that, of course, my co-caster is here, Vikramont. Welcome back. Good to be back, Shiver. So, Alliance. Five, they they have to win two out of three today. Out of all the teams sort of fighting for a playoff spot, they probably have the easiest route. Mm -hmm. uh, the first step to going through that is Ubalist, who are... Uh, sorry. I always get the name wrong. Ubalist, who are the last place team. And of course, I think the organization disbanded. The team is still mostly together, but they're now playing under, I guess, Absolute or Absolite Gaming. Yeah, they, they normally... Like, this is a tag that they have had for, for a while, actually, the Absolute Gaming. But they're they're still. I mean, they have been playing under this when they were Ubos as well. But but you're right. I mean, they are disbanded officially. Also, they have got their last games, I believe, today with them. Yeah, no longer facing anybody tomorrow. So they're facing Alliance and Fnatic here for the last day. Uh, Fnatic actually right after this one, and that's going to be their last two games in Star Series and their last two game under the name Ubos, regardless. As I believe some of the players have joined Gamers League, the German version. So. Ah. Uh, they have, uh, or some have already found a new home. Alliance, they have got EGM on the, the steering wheel. They have EGM drafting. So far, though, I mean, it's looking pretty straightforward with an IO and a bat band out and uh, OD and yeah, the, tree band, a tree and protector. And they just profit picked out first instead of not siren. That... Interesting. Mm -hmm. But they so Alliance definitely letting a lot of uh, things skate through. OD ban, okay. The Treant ban is a little more interesting, I think. Uh, I thought Ubelst likes to run Tree more than a lot of teams do. I think they've run it quite a few games this season. Uh, so maybe this is just the Lions trying not to take any chances, but also leaving a lot of very powerful heroes on the on the board. So Weaver Darkseer, I think that's a perfectly reasonable, uh, reasonable pickup for Ubelst as well. And of course Alliance, yeah, they seized the Bulldog hero as quickly as they could. Yeah, Naga Siren actually also not picked up Obos, interestingly enough, just completely ignored. EGM will select a Keeper of the Light for Aki, most likely. Uh, or at least he normally plays a Keeper. Of course, there's still Chen and Enchantress, etc. in the pool, but uh, perhaps Alliance just wants to go for a lot of pushing power here, so we'll see what they end up with. Darkseer and Weaver for, for Ubos. Darkseer already a bit of counter push, at least. Weaver, not as much, but uh, still a strong hero to have picked up. And of course, with these two pickups, they kind of have got a lot of options still open to them. We've seen both of these heroes in different roles, in different lanes. So they're not locked into any uh, any form of uh, format just yet for their lanes. As the Storm will get removed from the pool, as well as the Abaddon. No real surprise. Oh, well, the only real surprise is that Naga Siren is just ignored. Where is he? I mean, he's working well to get out the if it comes through, we'll definitely see the Naga Siren. Alliance rates Ubilst very highly, so they... Sorry, I said I meant Abaddon very highly. I don't know how they rate Ubilst. Uh, clearly highly enough to not do a troll draft, so... <laughs> they rate Abaddon very highly. We see them first pick Abaddon to mixed results, but uh, they'll certainly ban it out just to not have to deal with that. Keep in mind that, of course, uh, Ubilst did draft the Weaver, and now Alliance has taken out both Tree and Dark Tree, which are heroes that synergize extremely well with Weaver. Yeah. There goes the, uh, well, life sealer. I have to say, I, I would I would have loved to see the Naga Siren up on uh, Ubos themselves. I mean, the interesting thing is that they ban it out. In, well, including saying that they don't want to have it themselves, even though it has such a good coordination with the Dark Seer there. I would have liked to see uh, Jakiro still there, maybe. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Ubos, they've had a different playstyles every single game that we've seen from them. And they've only really won one game up against 4FC. And the game that they won, they were hyper aggressive. They were actually all over the place all the time. And they were able to just win that game, I believe, it was very fast as well, like in 30 minutes or so. Sure. And I would have liked to see something like that along the lines from that, like from Ubos as well. Just 
more aggressive than whatever they're they're putting together right now. Even though Earthshaker Vacuum into the epicenter from the Earthshaker Dark Seers is still a very strong combination, but it's not as aggressive as I would like them to be. Yeah, I, I do think that Earthshaker has uh, a lot of potential within this composition. And of course, early on, if they have a tri lane with Weaver and Earthshaker, if you Fissure successfully, the Weaver is going to be able to deal a tremendous amount of damage to that person and pretty much get them dead or low enough that he can finish the chase after the Fissure expires. So I think this does give them quite a bit of potential. Uh, I still worry. I think Alliance's draft is rock solid as well. And of course, having the Rubik gives them... Pretty much everything that is on Ubel's side here is attractive for Rubik to steal. Of course, there's the Shukachi, one of the best spells for Rubik to steal altogether. Uh, but also everything Earthshaker does, everything Darkseer does, these are all great, great steals. So I think EGM's Rubik, which is one of his best heroes, is could have a field day with this game. Yeah, I actually, um, I mean, you see EGM on the drafting wheel and... Maybe people were expect like normally he's a bit of a like when he just normally plays. Pumps, Do we know he's he is, drafting? Well, he's in the captain slot, but I'm actually thinking it still has four drafting because I think if EGM yeah. would be drafting, we would have seen way more different heroes and. When you're on our first pick, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> just you know aggression heroes as well. Because if you watch him play pubs, he normally wants to slay, and you know this is not really a slaying lineup, not at all. It's just a. Well, it's a very alliance ish. Yeah, this is very, very it's just standard. very it's just very safe pickup. I mean, safe I, safe drafts, which is more S four style. I rather think. Than GM yeah, I, I think since the patch, you can actually the first slot doesn't have to draft, right? So. Is that true? Um, I'm pretty sure. Damn. So in the games, I don't know if this is true in a private lobby, because I haven't done any private lobbies since the patch, but I know when you queue for captain's mode and you queue for captain's draft, your first slot doesn't get captain anymore. Somebody has to, like, pick it. They have to be like, I I am captain. So uh, I think... I'm pretty sure that's what's happening here. So you can pick... Uh, it's actually really freeing. It's very liberating, because you can choose who, who gets which color, right? Because otherwise your captain has to have... Blue on yep. one side. Maybe maybe EGM wanted blue. Wouldn't EGM be pink? Maybe EGM want wanted pink? pink. Good point. Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I was gonna say Puck was gonna. It, I was actually gonna predict the S4 Puck. I think Puck's extremely strong here. In fact, I am shocked that Ubilst picked Lena into into what was probably a Puck, uh, because Lena is just gonna get torn apart by that hero, in my opinion. Uh, if Alliance is on good ping. Lina is actually completely ineffectual against Puck in every way because he can he can even duck the ultimate with a well timed phase shift, and it wrecks Weaver. I, I don't know. I I'm really surprised Dubel picked the Lina into it. They should have known that a Puck was was impending. Yeah, I'm at least very happy that uh, Ubel's banned out the Phantom Lancer because you already could see that coming from Alliance. And I mean, it's it's safe, but I think like this this is like they have got three games today. And even, like, as you said, if they win two, they're already going to go to Kiev, guaranteed. If they only win one, they're not even out of it just yet. They just would, would be part of a tiebreaker. And I'm thinking, you know, you're up against Ubos. Don't you want to try something funky? But no. They're playing safe. They're playing secure. Oh, we're going to see an Invoker. But Armen Invoker is not the first time that we've seen it. Though it is a question if Armen is actually going to play it again, since he has played that before for Ubos, but since then he's actually rotated and he's now on the off lane, but I'm not quite sure mm. if he is playing it right now. It is at least something <laughs> that we are seeing changing, as in Invoker. We don't really see it that often. Off lane ghost walk Invoker? What's no, up? no, no. I mean, Armen no longer playing the mid, so no longer Invoker either. Right, right, right. We've seen an Invoker played by... Well, none of the heroes, that, none of the players that are not our men on Ubos, anyways. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see. I mean, uh, our men is an invoker specialist, so I, I think we'll probably still see him on that hero, but uh, I don't know. I mean, they could switch it up, and of course, invoker ghost walk off lane is, is strong. I mean, they could put it solo safe, too. There, there's a few options for what Ubos want to do here. I would love to see an aggressive trial lane with Lina or Shaker Weaver, but it looks like it's a safe trial lane with Darkseer offline Invoker mid. That's the standard thing that I would expect coming up from Ubos. I'm also expecting something standard from Alliance with just a trial lane with a Kotal Rubik and uh, some kind of carryish hero which still needs to be picked up with S4 and his Puck mid, Niche Prophet on the offlane on the Bulldog and the Gyrocopter. Yeah. You know, it's the standard a standard can get for them. Well, they, they don't want to lose, right? All I mean, right, Alliance... Right. They want to run a clean. A, they have a, clue, a run of three games today. They have to win two. Uh, if they can win the first two, they can goof off in the third one. But they, they, I think they want to make a clean run of it. This is a team known for, you know, 
some consistency and they've had a little more trouble this right like they this season they lost two games that they probably shouldn't have so they don't want to lose anymore and I, I can't blame them for it at all Jared Copter doesn't surprise me I think if the I deal hadn't know been that they would have had a taunt yeah he's got um he can yeah, do yeah. air guitar yeah, it's awesome. It's a good taunt. Yeah. Dude, Bulldog is kitted the heck out. Although, why commons in the slots? He must really like the way these look. I just, I don't think he has any else. He normally says that he doesn't care for items, so. Well, <laughs> but he's kitted. He, every slot is full, so. But he got, like, he Clearly got the scythe like and he got the treants. Yeah. Like, it's so present. Right, right. It's good, good stuff. The treants are so weird looking. Uh, anyway, so, I mean, I think if they, if they had the PL option, they would have taken PL. But without PL Gyro is perfectly acceptable, and he can shred almost everybody on Ubel's side. Yeah, we are gonna see an Invoker on the safe lane, by the way. Are many Invokers still, but safe lane it is. Let's take a look at who is going where. Quantic is the only team to get five fifty plus kills over Ubel's. <laughs> Our poor Ubel's, fifty two kills. Ooh. Oh, I think I remember that one because I didn't want to call GG. And they just kept on farming. Ah. farming. Anyways, we're gonna see Google there on the Radiant side here. Of course, you're watching Star Letter Star Series, a game uh, two of uh, five in the 29th day of the group stages of 30 days in total. I'm actually gonna use some mana to make sure that these trains are not gonna do anything here, but more trains coming in, so good luck with that. Anyways, we're gonna see our man. He will be playing his invoker, Rice, who's standing in. We'll be playing the Lena, Eid, or Edie, Edie, or Edward, will be playing the Earthshaker. As uh, that Trion will block the first creep spawn, that's at least that. We're gonna have Doppelganger playing the Weaver, he'll be in the mid. And on the offlane we have the Darkseer played by Chill. Alright. Looking up towards Alliance on the Dire side, still in the running for the playoffs of Star Ladder. They are the defending champions, so they certainly want to try to win if they can. So, Loda in the top safe lane tri lane as the gyrocopter. He's joined up by EGM on the Rubik and Ake currently stacking up some jungle camps as the Keeper of the Light. Looks like he'll get both these stacks, I believe. I think so too. That'll be very useful for him. Uh, so that's that's the Keeper of the Light there. And in the middle we have S4 on one of his best heroes. In fact, the hero that uh, won them $1.4 million, the Puck. And Admiral Bulldog on the hero that also at the same time won them the $1.4 million. He'll be in the offlane as Nature's Prophet. Yeah, and he already has uh, messed up the stacking and pulling a bit from Ubost. Has not managed to pull a lane towards him, I think, but uh, from the looks of it, he's not even going to need to try. I mean, he knows that there's already quite a bit of mana used up on Lina and the Earthshaker because they are trying to kill off those Treons very, very ferociously. And mm. he's going to get experience just fine here on this bottom lane, I think. Yeah. I, I, I don't think he'll have... Hmm. Yeah? I mean, if they land a good fissure, they should be able to do it because they don't need to use Light Strike Array until he tries to teleport, and then they can just interrupt it and kill him, maybe. But it's going to take a few levels, especially for Invoker. I mean, level 1 Invoker is not going to kill this, <laughs> this Nature's Prophet. He needs to get up to the... basically level 3, so he can have Invoke and 1 rank of Quas, so he can Cold Snap and then maybe Sun Strike. Then, yeah, I could see Bulldog getting into a little bit of trouble. Until then, he should be able to get XP just fine. Yeah, I think so, too. Let's see if they are agreeing with that. I mean, his trains do scout out that Eid is making his way over. And he is uh, gonna <laughs> get his uh, clarity popped off. Right. What are you expecting first blood in this, uh, in this series? Uh, Darkseer, maybe? Although he's already level 2, actually most of the way to level 3. Uh, I would have to guess that it's probably going to be the bottom lane, after all. They, they can probably kill Bulldog if he's not careful. Yeah. I also the think other that possibility is they just TP top and kill Chill somehow. Yeah, maybe even Weaver. I mean, of course, you've got the waiting yeah. rift, so he can't Sukushi himself away. If you're fast enough, you can harass him enough. I mean, look at this harassment. It's quite In theory, uh, you have waiting rift, although S4 has chosen not to level it just yet. He actually has two in orb. For extra, yeah, actually, Weaver keeps getting hit by this orb, so he's taken a tremendous amount of harassment. So yeah, I, if they rotate somebody over and Weaver continues eating the orbs, yeah, it could be trouble. Yeah, we'll see. So far, this shield is uh, out of mana almost, so he has only got one iron shell left. He is putting out two iron shells on the wave as much as possible just to keep the wave pushed out. But in comes EGM and Aki again, and they're actually gonna try to go for him, perhaps force out a surge and pick him up if he does surge. 
but I don't think Chill's gonna be fooled. Still gonna get. Oh, actually, that's a pretty nice uh, telekinesis, but oh, they still nice. get him. That was that was a really good telekinesis by EGM there. Uh, not quite enough, but enough to harass. I think Chill. Yeah, he's going to head back because he's completely out of mana. Just head back to base. So almost as successful as getting first blood. It just wasn't, you know, the the exact wording. Uh, Bulldog, meanwhile, has been pushed off. Uh, he may actually head to jungle because he's not really doing as well as I think he'd hope. Nice. Uh, he has back? been zoned down. No, he's going back. Okay. I just I think that at this point they can threaten him a little bit. The lane is pushed up. No, maybe not because the lane is way pushed. I think RMN's going to go as Midas Invoker again here. Here we go. Ah, Fisher is on the wrong side oh, of the Fisher bad. though. Bulldog should be really able to bad. get away. Oh yeah, it's easy because the Fissure was messed up. Yeah. Uh, actually, double stacked camp, so they may just try to push off of this. But if the Trent gets the oh, wow, this is everything's coming up, coming up flowers for Bulldog right now. He's gonna get easy XP back here. Yeah, no wonder he was able to. Or he wanted the TP back. This uh, overextension could actually cost some lives if someone tries to TP in because mm. I mean, just a TP in from a Rubik or a Coddle would actually, would actually put this Lina and this Urshake in quite a bit of trouble here, but so far nobody coming just yet, and actually the experience will not one. as much because they moved so much It's only level forward. one Keeper's life. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, they, they, TP's in wouldn't be that great of an idea because they could split the fight with Fissure, land another Cold Snap. Yeah. yeah. It would be troublesome. I think it's smart of Alliance just to play that very safely. Uh, look at these jungle stacks, by the way, for Alliance. Already a three stack here. Uh, they've stacked these camps as well. It's going to be a lot of XP coming in, considering the fact that Keeper of the Light can clear it out with Illuminate. Yeah, or Gyrocopter, depending on who was uh, going to be one of the farm. Aloda is doing really well, though, on last hits. He is highest. 24 to 14, as uh, only each, or only S4, actually, that's able to keep up with him at the moment. We're sitting on 25 to 7. Invoker doing okay as well. I mean, he's far free farming, but he's still behind on the uh, Gyrocopter. He's 20 for 4. Yeah. But the rest is all quite uh, a way lower than that. As we actually have got uh, Weaver just not doing that well here in this mid lane. Definitely not, not oh, winning really up isn't. on S4. And he's just... He's almost 10 last hits behind. Yeah, Doppelganger... Do you know who this is? Is this an alt? Or is this just his name? I, just, I, don't really, I think it's just his name. Player. German player, okay. but I'm not sure. Fair enough. I, I just don't really know him that well. Uh, he keeps getting nailed by orbs. Oh, that he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Nice first blood. Yeah, you can't get nailed by that orb constantly. You just can't. Yeah, even if it means you have to get earlier boots than you otherwise would. Avoid. You can't be eating those orbs. Like, and that's why Asphor's leveled it so heavily, up to three. Just he's just trashing this Weaver mid. In the meantime, you're I mean, on top losing mid to S4 is like no is no shame. Yeah, there's no still. shame in that. That's for sure. I mean, especially now this. I mean, as you said, I mean, you don't really know who it is. It's a bit of a newer player, perhaps, and. No, it's not an easy lane. Weaver up against the puck. Puck should be winning that purely because of his silence. But still, there are some mistakes that maybe shouldn't be made. But tower goes down on the top lane, so extra gold going the way of alliance. In the meantime, we have got a double gang back in mid. I mean, he's still needing to farm up more, still needing to get his levels. Perhaps he'll try to go for the safe lane once he reaches level six or something. Right. Yep. So far, you're just seeing Ubels a little bit at class, but. Hey, I mean, Midas is coming to Invoker, or right? the uh, recipe is, and it'll have the gloves and one more last hit, so that'll give them that XP boost that they need. I, I do think Midas Invoker is probably the right way to play the hero if you're going to play it, especially in a one roll like this, because you need those levels desperately, uh, and you need them at a time in which they're still relevant and can still contest things like Gyrocopter. I don't expect Loda to go Midas. Yeah, he's not. He's just making his um, drums right now. Or, sorry, his uh, Akala. Yeah. In the meantime, our man, I mean, he has been getting nice levels, uh, all courtesy of the supports, is not hanging around the lane all too much. He's level 6, our man, which is pretty decent, but it does mean that there's still Lina that's level 2, which is pretty sad for her because she kind of needs to have more levels than this, especially because, well, level 2, she'll die so fast with Illuminates and Aegis Wrath going through in a team fight. Not let alone cooldowns, etc. Earthshaker level 3 as well, so they've really sacrificed their levels to make sure that Invoker got a lot. Right. But that, which that's is gonna come to bite them in the ass. Maybe not for the Earthshaker, because he still has a Fissure, but Lina is quite level dependent. Certainly, Lina, if you're gonna bother picking a Lina, you really hope that you can get something like the fast uh, Laguna Blade, or she just isn't very useful, right? Like, she's, mm -hmm. she just doesn't do very much. If you want to stun, there's a lot of heroes with. with just as good stuns. At any rate, they, they are trying to do a little bit in the jungle. They 
they are smoked up. If they can get a kill onto Ake, which should be very doable. Well, level four, Keeper of the Light, no match, perhaps, but they would have to dive very far. And uh, you say they'd have to dive, but you can only dive if you have a creep wave, and Illuminates are pretty good in uh, keeping creep waves away, so that's not going to be a behind smoke gank. So they're going to try to go from the side, but Aki already safe behind this tower. It's not going to get caught out. Not for now, anyway. Right. Yeah, so far Alliance definitely advancing their game plan very well. Just look at the amount of denies, the amount of XP that S4 on this puck has taken away from the Weaver. 16 denies? This is like Outworld-ish. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a full level difference. And actually, there's a full level, there's a full two level difference between Weaver and S4, and there's only one kill. Illusion. Right. It's This is going to be a very scary game for Ubilst, I think a little sooner than we think. Loda can just go in early... I mean, now that he has the Akal of the Phase, he could just add drums onto here, and he'll be very capable of participating in fights anchored by the Puck. And let's take a look at uh, Bulldog. He does have Midas, so he's leveling okay now. He should have parity with the Darkseer. Yeah, he, he has parity, so Darkseer is 6, Bulldog 6. Darkseer does, of course, have um, everything except the recipe for the mechanism oh. because he's decided to skip boots. They want to go for Aki here. He might be in some trouble, but he's actually going to be able to be okay, Eat. Getting himself away. Yes. Aki will still go down. Nicely done. Light Striker Ray coming in. Bulldog coming in too late. Weaver in the meantime goes down in the mid lane again to a solo puck. No mana for a time lapse. Kind of. Yeah. It's crucial. Well, by now, Waning Rift is. Yeah, um, actually, level is four. Maxed. Yeah, so uh, that'll be S4's blink, or at least he's only 300 off from it. It's a fine kill to get on Ake. I mean, it's nice as far as it goes, but now this puck is two levels ahead of your Invoker, who got Midas. Uh, you're gonna see S4 probably just take over this game. Interestingly, he's gone for treads. This is very much, yeah, I wanna do auto attack damage on my invoker to get the attack speed from the treads. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's okay. He is, but probably the one that's supposed to be trying to get the, this lane to, uh, to a bit more later stages, even though, compl sure. like, normally you have got, like, a team that you say, well, this team is gonna get the mid game ahead, or, like, this team is gonna get ahead in the mid game, this is gonna be late game team early game team, but Absolute or Ubos is having a... I think they have only a very small small window of opportunity because Alliance is going to be having the late game, the very, very late game because of the split push and the gyrocopter carry potential. And Ubos, they have got an Evoker and a Weaver. And even though they can be very strong, I mean, there's... I feel like they only have, like, around the 30-minute mark that they have to try mm -hmm. and uh, get their advantages higher, higher than Alliance and then force the game out within 5 to 10 minutes because otherwise they don't have any chances in this game. I mean, they still they have combo. They can yeah. back into a, they can back into an echo slam. They have they have some options. they I don't think they're completely helpless. An invoker is is very much a hero that is extremely powerful at every stage except like the first fifteen minutes, basically. So the fact that he is Midas and will be rocketing towards those high levels, I mean, let's not underestimate Invoker. There's a reason he was as dominant as he was for for a long time. Unfortunately, all those reasons got taken away, QQ, but uh, <laughs> he still has very, very good spells. Uh, he just doesn't have attack damage or uh, movement speed or items that fix either of those things or an ability to actually level because games have gotten faster. But other than that, great hero. Yeah, we've got a TP in towards the bottom lane. Blink forward, looking for a pickup. Yes. Finds one. Hello, eat by eat. Looking for the next one. Dream Coil up on two. And also comes Rubik. The TPs are still going to be there, though, and they both get themselves out. Nicely done. Good TPs. And the Shikushis from Rubik not in time, not enough to get him there in time to make sure that he gets uh, still at least one of the counter. But yeah, great TPs coming off from Wells realizing, you know what? Yes. We're screwed. The Dream Coil is already down. We can take it. We can go home. Ubil's doing a little better than Navi there on the, the tippies <laughs> out against the Drupo. <laughs> Eat your heart out, yeah. Navi. Ah, uh, this is probably Doppelganger dying again. Yep, Bye. there comes the silence, in comes the Telekinesis as well. And the Fate Bolt and the Orb. Uh, easy kill again for S4, who is now on 4-0-0. to, zero to zero. He's got all four games in, or all four kills in the game. And he's looking just so strong right now. And yeah. There's no equivalent I mean, I, for that for this on Ubil's at the moment. I God no, it. yeah. I mean, this is... If this was Fata, he'd have already gone phase instead of treads, because he'd be like, I'm ready to just win this game. But it's S4, he doesn't really do the phase puck. Uh, but even so, I mean, I mentioned once he gets blink, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him take over the game. And that's basically what you're seeing here. I, I don't... God damn.
1033 is such a good time for Blink. But yeah, you got those two kills on Weaver early. Yep, tower will still go do down nicely, uh, taken by our man, helped out by his uh, four spirits who get resummoned and instantly taken illuminated to the face. That's gonna be sad. And uh, he's actually getting chased down right here. In comes EGM, might have a telekinesis. No, he just steals four spirits, which is, by the way, a great spell to steal. I mean, if you're is a Rubik uh, in this game, he, there are so many good spells that you can steal. Fisher, Lace oh, Strike yeah. Ray, Dragon Slave, Shikushi, all spells that are spammed out. Iron Shells, Vacuum. This is like heaven for Rubik. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and there's the. It's the. Whoa. Oh man, S4. S4. Illuminate will take the first kill of the game that is not for, for S4, but that orb. I mean, it was a Dream Coil up on three. The orb hit at least two of those and illuminate over the top. It was just. As for dominating, and he's he got one assist right now. <laughs> he's just going under his shaker. Yeah, why, why not? The hell not? One more hit, boom, gets it. Phase shift gonna be there. In comes a call down. Lena teleporting into her doom goes down as well. Second kill of the game. That's not for Sorry. EGM. He doesn't even get an assist. Wow. Yeah, unfortunately, this is more or less over. Um, I think so too. This they lost the lane too hard in the mid. Uh, I actually think the bottom lane was fine. Sure, Earthshaker and Lena were a little bit under level, but as long as Puck isn't able to just go global, you're actually okay. You're stable enough that the Invoker can find some levels. The Midas is just, they're not even gonna, they're gonna lose the game before the Midas actually becomes that important. Yeah. It's its just very, very tough to be Ubel's tier because you just, you if you don't have somebody that can go up against that, that S4 in the middle and he gets a hero like Puck, which I, I almost think they, you know, like I said, like they picked Lena into it and they chose to run a Weaver mid against it, which Weaver, sh the matchup just based on heroes is not fun, but it's not horrible. But if you just get hit by those extra orbs, so you run out of regen really quickly, you just stand no chance and he's in trouble. No, he's fine. Now, if he shows his face again, he's not so fine. S4 sees himself a new opportunity. Hello, Invoker. S4. Can he jump? He has a dream coil up again. Can get maybe one on two. Doppelganger close by. Shikushi himself away. And actually, yep, there we go. Silence up. Orbs, one hit. There we go. Dream coil <laughs> helping out. Clean kill for S4 once again. Yeah. All right. Well, I feel bad. I mean, I think Ubalist Ubalist aren't. Whenever a team does is the last team in Star Letters Star Series, they always get a lot of like criticism. Like, oh my god, they're horrible. I mean, Ubalist could trivially be a lot of teams, but Alliance isn't one of those teams, and it's just too bad for them that one of their last games in this season, and one that will be remembered is against the defending champions and possibly the best team in the tournament. Yeah, this is uh, this is looking pretty uh, an, like a pretty uneven match, let's put it that way. Soul Strike will not be hit on EGM. He's still got four spirits, by the way, almost disappearing, so perhaps he wants to summon himself some new ones before in, but yeah, this is basically Alliance saying, you know what, uh, I feel like we have farmed enough on our gyrocopter, even though he's still getting more and more, maybe he wants to have his BKB before doing more. Same thing for Nature's Prophet, perhaps he wants a yeah. Shadow Blade before going anywhere else, I mean he is has he got that complete almost. Have it? Oh, he has it. Smoke yeah. up, actually, for uh, Ubos. Perhaps he can make something happen, but there's a Sentry Ward already there. Hello! Loop. For Loop. Spirits. They're all gonna walk over it. Yep. <laughs> oh. Oh my lord, that's so unfortunate. The smoke just gets completely stuffed. And Loda has his BKB, and I think yeah. that gives them the opportunity. They could either Roshan, which is an option, or they could just push without without even bothering with the Aegis. I don't know. Buff Invoker, IMO, also. I, I would love to see this hero back in the metagame. Not, like, ubiquitous, but he's such a fun hero. Just, like, not huge buffs, but just something. I, I really, like... He's got great upside potential, and just his downsides are so incredibly awful that it really keeps him off. Like, his laning is just so bad. Well, write a letter. I... sure, I'll write a letter. Why don't you write a letter? You've got the hookup. Yeah, but I'm not too fussed about that. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. We almost got a Blink Dagger up on Eid. So perhaps we're still gonna see one of the Wombo Combo things that Ubles can actually uh, throw and throw the way of Alliance. I mean, Blink Dagger into an Echo Slam that is vacuumed with all the heroes from Alliance there. Light Strike Array, Fisher. I mean, you can think of it. And the Sun Strike perhaps helping out with a bit of extra damage. Meteor. Everything being dropped. I mean, it's it's so, it has got so much potential. Deafening Blast. But only once can they actually get that off. Only once. Alliance, their control, like... I don't think they can. I, don't, I think that Ubos is going to have a tough time getting their perfect team fight going.
Oh, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see RMN sneaking some kills. He's almost at 4 staff. Well, almost. He's like 600 off 4 staff, so that's pretty cool. 4 staff's gonna be very useful for him. Especially because he did go the treads instead of the phase. So he... God, it's... <laughs> Boker is such a... I, I call this here like the Harrison Bergeron hero because he has such power, but he's limited so much by his base. Like, look at this with treads. Invoker is almost slower than like Luna is with no boots. Oh, EGM cold snap on him! Nice. Boom, he's dead. Oh. That's a good kill. The meteor he... deafening blast cold snap combination. This is victorious yeah. once again. We do have it, of course, an Aegis now upon Alliance, picked up by Loda, Invis Rune, activated by S4, hanging around the tower. Wants to just blink in, Dream Coil, Waning Rift, and kill our men, and I think he actually can do that. Especially if we get some help from the Illuminate coming in as well. Cheapy out, might be enough? Nope. Hello, Keeper of the Light. Hello, Rice. Tries to walk away, can't do it, because there are some people standing. Oh, maybe S4 will still die. Bugs coming in as well, cooldown will miss, and they will get S4, nicely done, but in the same time, I mean, S4 buys himself back, TPs himself back, and they're still tier 1 tower standing, so he'll be back here shortly, but Ubos did just triple their kill score. I, S4 really picking up the... Yeah, so he buys back, still has 4k, he picks up ultimate orb, so it's not too late, it's not too late for S4 to prove that he's not boring. All he has to do is go Scotty. Ha, <laughs> doubt it. This is a serious game for serious people. Go Scotty. Go Scotty, S4. Go Scotty. Swarms. Go Scotty. Look at how focused they are. Like, they're getting swarms through at them, bugs and all, but they don't give a damn. They just want to kill off that tower. Ooh, he looking for a nice fish here. Maybe blocking some people off. Blocking their escape. Oh, man, you're too far out. You're gonna die. Four stuff forward. Nice I don't force. think that matters. Rubik gets a kill. Nature's Prophet Ultimate just picks himself up. And Lina, that wasn't even focused by anybody. That was just Lina's lack of health. Kinda. Like, I think that was. Was it a one shot? No, she did get hit by the orb, I guess. Yeah, she got hit by the orb. Let's put that. More bugs coming through, but they really. They're not diving. They're just really focused. In comes here, Slaker like with the Fisher, with the Blink. But it's not enough, he doesn't have an Echo Slam. Already used it, double kill for Loda. Down goes everybody apart from the Lina who wasn't there to begin with. That's gonna be a tier 3 tower, <laughs> gonna be a Rax. And that's... I mean, Ubos, we know that they are not a team to call GG, even though it might seem that way. But, I mean... Oh look, can he actually do that? No. No. Oh. BKB for Aki. playing around a little bit. Yeah, sure. BKB, uh, keep it yeah. light. Very strong. <laughs> nice four stuff. Uh, Sick four stuff. Four stuff from Admiral Bulldog. That was. Yep. yep. Sick, sick four stuff. Like yep. I said. <laughs> That's Admiral Bulldog's second kill of the game. And Aki says, screw you. Rage quit. <laughs> you he rage quit. That's awesome. That actually is awesome. I like it. Oh. It Can goes to silence him? three. Oh, Hero troll. silent stuff, Fisher. Might still be able to do something. No time lapse away. Doppelganger. Able to get himself out. Rocket barrage. First stuff into safety. Chill. You're last one there. You're dead. Dead. Oh, I'll kiss back. <laughs> and buys back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, this is this is getting kind of stupid. Yeah. Oh, we got Echo Slam. Nice. That's gonna be one dead. Perhaps a second one here as well. Bulldog forced away. And our shaker dead. Loda with the kill. Double kill for Loda. Walks through a dark sea or a wall though, and that's gonna be an Aegis burn. Nice wall from the ice wall from the from our men as well. It comes to BKB turned on. Rocket Rush still gonna be there. S4 still dead. Everybody yeah, dies it's the lack of survivability caused by not having Scotty. Mhm. Mm that must be it. Must be it. Scotty gives a tremendous amount of um, health and mana and stats. It's really good. Well, everybody dies here left and right. We actually have got Ubos. We spawned some fighting spirit right here. Loda might be in some trouble. He already used his Aegis. And he will get picked off again. That's gonna be everybody dead on the set of Alliance at least once. Yeah. Apart from the Rubik. Actually, no. Rubik died as well. Everybody at least died. Look at the buyback. Sure. There was a buyback from S4, buyback from Loda, buyback from Rubik, buyback from Aki. Yeah. And the only one that did not buyback was Nature's Prophet, who actually did not die. Okay, that's the only one that did yeah. not die. Bulldog did not die. He snuck out. He was very, very yeah. low, but he just did this typical sprout. Sprout teleport. Yeah, I mean, fine. Good defense by Ubles as far as it goes. I mean, Alliance were diving the fountain constantly, and Ubles were like, nope. This game is not quite advanced to fountain diving just yet, chums. Mm -hmm. And so they defend. I mean, four staff for our man. He gets a gem. He still has that Midas level 13. He's, he's doing okay. He's three levels behind Puck and Gyro. But Whoa, nice. Gets they blow up Rubik. Yeah. I mean, Rubik was pretty far out. 
I was just, you know, applauding Alliance's serious play for not, fu for, you know, going for Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> that totally didn't work out the way I thought it would. Perhaps they can get themselves a kill upon Bulldog, though. They have a gem, but they need to have... Oh, the oh, dust, dust there. Dream Coil doesn't hit upon Chill, but he's now left to his advice. Left by himself. S4 still jumping forward. Chill, all of a sudden, is in trouble. Mechanism will keep him alive, and that's the first death of Nature's <laughs> Prophet. Right there. Buyback. Back Rage buyback. Uh, yeah, I mean, Alliance have spent an insane amount of gold on these buybacks. Every single player buying back. And the thing is, they're 20k gold, oh, so let's say they spent silence, 10k doesn't hit up on E, though. Fisher? Nice Fisher. Yeah, insane oh, Fisher. Vacuum. Except they vacuumed into this <laughs> But Bulldog might still die again. He does indeed go down. S4 keeps himself up, though. Perhaps Double can, can make a difference in that. S4 jumping himself out. Is gonna be a life time lapse away and blink away from S4. That's gonna be one for one trade. Urshaker for Nature's Prophet. A very good trade for Ubos. Oh no. That's a safe reward right there, <laughs> oh, Weaver, you're dead. <laughs> I would say comeback. Uh I if they had just run after the Fisher, I'd be like, sure. But no. They went into the meat grinder once again. I like E Blade Gyro. I think it's underrated. Uh, we're, it's not underrated. Gyro is just OP, OP in general, so it doesn't matter what items you build, he's still gonna be good. But E Blade Gyro is pretty cool because he does do a lot of magic damage. Pick him up, did you see the trivia? I did not. Name the three heroes good. that have built more than 10 Scotties in competitive Dota 2. Morphling? Uh, Morphling, Shadow Fiend. Slark? God, no. The Slark hasn't played enough, and Scotty isn't that great on Slark. I mean, it's good, but it's, it's so much money. Uh, hmm. Who would the third one be? Scotty. So it's gotta be Shadow Fiend, it's gotta be Morphling. Man, I feel bad. I don't, I don't know. You should feel bad. Scotty. Triple kill for Lona, by the way. I mean, they actually are looking to end it right now. Oh, Doppelganger still comes in. Doesn't get Including cool Dota 1 or just Dota 2? Just Dota 1. Alright. You mean just Dota 2? Just Dota 2. <laughs> yes. So the Scotty's sick for Yuza, but she hasn't been added. She was added only very recently. Oh, hacks up on the invoker, invoker! I think you're dead. First stuff. Means that the gem is actually on the other side of the wall, which is pretty Clinks, decent. maybe? I don't know. It's decent on Clinks. Oh man! He picks up his gem again, but I think that he's just gonna die again with it again. Light Strike Array might help out. He's actually still living, he's fine. No, he's not fine. In comes a call down. Down he goes. Bulla coming up from the side, load a triple kill. Rice walking away, Eat landing a Fisher, just annoying. Vacuum into the wall, though! Nice. That's at least gonna be load of dead. S4 is alive. S4 dead. Alright. Yeah. I mean, Wombo. <laughs> Wombo. Good, good stuff. Alright. Um, I mean, sooner or later, Lance is going to win. This is just. Yeah. They're having some fun. They know that they have a long day today. I mean, keep in mind, even with all these, like, kills going back and forth, like, the, the gold graph is still going in Alliance's direction mm -hmm. now. Oh, Queen of Pain! What's wrong with me? Of course. Yeah, 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 because you can go auto-attack. Like, Mushi does it. Uh, CTY has done it. Oh, they're going to get this, this stand-in. Yeah, uh, alright, fair enough. They're going to get Eat as well. Silent stuff. So muscular. Actually, they back off. The muscular puck. Eat no, will still... Oh, Telekinesis onto on. the other side of the Illuminate. We'll still go down, though. Bulldog coming here from the side. Now, Chill stuck inside some trees and picked off by EGM, the captain. I think they want to. Can't believe yeah. that Queen of Pain. <laughs> Scotty's really good on Queen of Pain, actually, uh, and it's underrated on Puck, as we said. But S4 is too boring to to take Scotty. Gem. What a coward! Yeah. Double kill for Doppelganger as he still gets Rubik in the end. Nicely done. What's Six on strike. I can, of course there is a gem up on Bulldog though, so the hex oh, is there. Oh no, Doppelganger! Oh, Doppelganger! Oh, yeah, yeah dead. Okay, dead. So that's gonna be like still people not going for tier three towers just yet. And this could go on for a long while. Ubos has got another game to play after this one, of course. It's uh, gonna be up against Fnatic. Yeah, we, I, we haven't seen an auto attack Queen of Pain in a while, but uh, auto attack Queen of Pain is actually really quite viable, especially if a game goes long and a lot of people get BKBs. You want to start being able to auto attack on that hero, so. Uh, RMN, nice little mop up there. Yeah, this game it. is going way longer than it needs to, but that's okay. Because some of these kills are really fun. This is starting to devolve into pub status. It's 50 kills at 27 minutes. Good times. Well, as said, the, that team with the most kills in the Star Series was was um, Quantic up against Ubos. Perhaps Elias is looking to change that record. What was the record? 50, 50. or so? 
Okay, so they need 18 more. I don't know, I think Oopals are capable of getting some kills. Like, it's gonna be harder, because RMN is level 18, he's only one level behind fucking Loda now. Loda, of course, has his BKB, it's on... Oh, it's on 6 oh, Nice Link, Echo! Link, Echo, Fisher! Deafening Blast, and a really double nice. kill for EGM, or for RMN, rather. Really nice. They got so many kills, especially after Alliance had all these kill streaks. It gave them a ton of gold. So Earthshaker can now get Arcane Boots as well. He's got Arcane Blink if he wants it. Or he could just skip the Arcane entirely, which makes him have a horrible mana pool. But he can go Veil of Discord. And that actually could do some work, because Loda's like losing a lot of uh, BKB charges. They're not going to win, but they could definitely make it even more annoying for Alliance. By the way, Loda with Refresher. Yeah. Legit item for Gyrocopter. Uh, you know, call down, it's a 5.5 second cooldown, which is way too long if you ask me, so... Yeah, it's, uh, it's a long cooldown. I mean, call down has a 45 second cooldown, so using that twice is pretty cool. Uh, Rocket Barrage, it, it is a ridiculously long cooldown of... I mean, it's basically two and a half seconds that you don't have it up, which is disgusting. So you certainly want to refresh that. Flat and you can cannon. refresh your E-Blade, too. You can refresh your Flat Cannon. That's cool. You can refresh Flat Cannon, but that's so boring. But E-Blade is actually an item that Loda has built in a lot of uh, gyrocopters. Like, seriously. In a serious manner, so... That's sure. Not that big no, of E-Blade's a pretty legit. I, I like E-Blade. Um, I mean, the thing is, E-Blade shuts down somebody's auto-attack, which is good against, like, Weaver, for instance. True. Smoke up for Alliance, it's serious time. Smoke well, yeah, because this has gone on for a while, and they have eaten a lot of deaths more than they'd like to, so... Yeah. They may want to just finish this. Wow, god, what a good face shift by a store there. Yeah, our man still goes invisible, they don't have a gem anymore, so that's gonna be a telekinesis up that high ground by Rice. One more hit. Yeah, that's gonna be him dead to the, uh, the end. Uh, Bulldog, Bulldog actually does. might be in some trouble nope. here. In comes a Fisher from the Rubik. Might be helping out. Illuminate will fly, our men will die. Lost and the they look to try, try and chase down uh, Eat as Ooh, well. Weed Feed Fable. That's gonna be at least four dead on the side of Ubos. Alliance, done playing nice, done playing friendly, done playing, rather, and um, gonna be looking to end this game, hopefully. Uh, yeah. I mean, that was a nice response, actually. Good blinding light from Ake. Good Fissure from each jam. Think about Earthshaker against Rubik is that his Fissures are better than yours. Uh, Rubik's Fissures. Yeah. So well, then no wind up. Better than mine is not that hard to, to make that, like, other people's Fissures better than mine, but better than the ones of the Earthshaker. Yeah. No cast point. Just dropping it in straight away. Realize how fast this would have been over with a Scotty on Punk, though. Only. Well, at least with uh, the Zero Blade, he can dive. Another nice run. thing about him. Another, mm -hmm. Yeah, E Blade so good for diving. I mean, Ghost Scepters are just amazing for being able to get into that fountain. Wow, a little bit of shredding the loot and vis. Oh! <laughs> nice fissure for BG. <laughs> he has a four staff, though, so it's fine. Yeah, it's true. Hold on. <laughs> and that's gonna be. Oh, it wasn't even Aki for forcing him. Who forced him? Was it Invoker? Yeah, it was Invoker. <laughs> I thought Aki was gonna get revenge. Brutes. Uh, nine more kills to, to be. Vacuum! Haunted. Fisher! Echo Slam! Down goes Aki! Can they get more? No, they get not as four! That's four! No, uh, no, I'm gonna turn into a piglet. Face shift is there as well. Gyro kills of everybody in the meantime. He's like. Spoil spread. Down goes wow. Ganga. That's right, kill. That's actually uh, a really ages. interesting stat. Uh, the 30 or more kills. Like, Alliance usually wins really early, or they, they play somewhat defensively for a while and then come back, so... Uh, they don't usually rack up the kills this way. Not like a team like Quantec, but... They're now only 5 kills off the mark. I think this Ancient's gonna fall before they can beat Quantec's record, so... Yep, there's the GG. Uh... I mean... Alli Alliance are just a stronger team, honestly. But... I, I think Oopals have... Like, a lot of the players have potential. We've seen them in the scene. They've been in and out of various top-ranked teams and just... Not good enough to beat Alliance, but that's fine. Most teams aren't. Yeah, we're gonna be seeing another game of Ubos. Let's see if they have some more luck there. Uh, up against Fnatic. Fnatic is not doing as hot in Star Series as Alliance has been doing. So uh, that will be our next game in 15 minutes time, so hold on for that. We'll be right back with uh, hopefully less of a one-sided game of Dota 2. We'll be right back. <laughs>